These folks probably could have used a seven second delay to help cover their faux pas in front of a live TV audience. Kanye and T-Swift One of the great pleasures in awards show watching is engaging in a disagreement over the chosen recipient for an award. Typically, this involves you yelling towards the TV and the ceremony going on entirely unperturbed. But what happens when an attending guest opts to offer their own opposition? Millions of viewers of the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards witnessed this exact scenario as Kanye West came on stage to interrupt Taylor Swift's acceptance speech upon being awarded Best Female Video and to suggest that Beyonce should have won for Single Ladies. The incident has become something of pop culture legend, with West's infamous I'ma let you finish line spawning countless memes. Harvey's Slip a successful game show host, talk show host, and stand-up comic, Steve Harvey seemed like an easy, non-controversial choice as the host of the 2015 Miss Universe pageant. But in the show's ultimate moment of truth, as Miss Universe was set to be crowned, Harvey erroneously announced runner-up Miss Columbia as the event winner rather than Miss Philippines, the rightful winner. A few minutes later, amidst pomp, circumstance, and even an official crowning of Miss Columbia, Harvey had to cop to his mistake and announce the real Miss Universe. Apparently, pageant organizers somehow weren't too upset at this flub as he has agreed to a multi-year contract to continue on as host. Ashley gets busted. It's said that the use of a backup vocal track is a common practice for pop artists, particularly while performing televised sample gigs to promote a new album. Still, the Saturday Night Live audience in attendance for an October show in 2004 wasn't looking for an insider perspective on the live music process when Ashley Simpson's backup track malfunctioned and revealed her lip-syncing ways. When her hit song, Pieces of Me, began playing prematurely and left Simpson and her backup band exposed, she had little to do but perform an awkward jig while still in the spotlight. The mistake was a costly one, as fans were angered and Simpson was bumped from her lofty perch of stardom soon after. Carl Lewis's Anthem the national anthem is a consistent staple of the pregame portion of live sporting events, something that you aren't even likely to really notice unless things go badly. Roseanne's disrespectful take on the Star Spangled Banner in 1990 at the Jack Murphy Stadium springs immediately to mind. But still, it's hard to top the debacle that was Olympic hero Carl Lewis trying his hand at the anthem during the 1993 NBA Finals series between the Chicago Bulls and the Phoenix Suns. Lewis, attempting to launch a music career, did not merely possess a fingernails on a chalkboard voice, but even acknowledged his failings by shouting, uh-oh, and I'll make up for that during the lackluster performance. Balloon Boy It made for gripping television when in Fort Collins, Colorado in 2009, the Heen family reported to authorities and media outlets that they had launched a UFO-shaped gas balloon with their six-year-old son Falcon having mistakenly snuck inside. Too bad it was all a sham. In reality, the balloon boy was never trapped in the floating vessel at all, instead hiding in the attic all along. In a live interview with Wolf Blitzer on Larry King Live amid suspicions over the legitimacy of the story, the family's hoax came completely undone when Falcon spoke up by saying, We did this for the show. Falcon's admission was a costly one for his parents, who both faced felony charges. Capone's Empty Vault it seems like a fairly fundamental lesson in Television 101 that if you offer a heavily promoted special based on a tantalizing reveal, you better make sure that the reveal comes with at least a somewhat satisfying payoff. There was no such luck for Geraldo Rivera, who was attempting to regain his place in the spotlight after his 1985 firing from ABC when he hosted a live special showcasing the opening of a secret vault once owned by Al Capone. After teasing the possible finding of bodies or money, all that emerged from the search were piles of dirt and empty bottles. After the search, an egg on his face Rivera was left to awkwardly concede defeat and seemed eager to get off camera. Ooh, weak research, Kathy Lee. 
Having funny man Martin Short appear on the Today Show to promote his voice work in Madagascar 3 seemed like a perfectly harmless, safe, and entertaining sit-down opportunity. It would have helped, however, if co-host Kathy Lee Gifford had done even a basic level of research. After chatting about Short's son graduating college, Gifford moved on to asking about the comedian's wife, unaware that she had died of ovarian cancer two years prior. To his credit, Short took the painful line of questioning in stride, waiting until the commercial break to correct her glaring error. It was only when Gifford apologized after the break that the mistake was made known. F it, I quit. For disgruntled employees, it was a true-to-life dream scenario of someone going out in a blaze of glory. For the news-watching TV audience, it was a stunning moment of, did that really just happen? While reporting on a story about an illegal marijuana club for Anchorage, Alaska's KTVA network, Charlo Green dropped the metaphorical and literal microphone by admitting her role as the owner of the marijuana club before closing with the now iconic words, F it, I quit. The camera then cuts to a clearly shell-shocked anchor who stumbles over attempts to both cut to commercial and apologize for the offensive language used. Weigh in, boner. The bantamweight fight between Will Camposano and Sergio Pettis was well down the line of the UFC 167, but their head-to-head -head still managed to be the talk of the televised pre-fight weigh-in. With both fighters stripped down to their underwear in order to give a fairly accurate weight, Camposano was shown to be a little overly excited for the upcoming showdown, revealing a noticeable erection poorly hidden by his white boxer briefs. No matter what Camposano does for the remainder of his UFC career, the poor guy will now forever be be known for his boner at the UFC 167 weigh-in. Poor Susie. The job of a sideline reporter is often a difficult, underappreciated one as they are typically asked to corral insightful information out of uninterested sports figures who are instead focused on a game at hand. For ESPN's Susie Kolber, however, the problem was an entirely different one during a 2003 broadcast of a New York Jets football game. Interviewing legendary Jets quarterback Joe Namath, Kolber's questions fell by the wayside as an intoxicated Namath expressed his desire to kiss her and claimed that he couldn't care less about the team struggling. All right, folks, that's our video. Do you remember any of these live televised events? Let us know about what you thought in the comments below. And while you're here, go ahead and check out these other videos. You know the deal. You know you'll like them. And while you're here, too, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks.